Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name is Alex Rickabaugh, and I'm here to talk to you today about advanced concepts in Angular. So um, just a little bit about me. I've been at Google now for about seven years. Uh, the last few of them have been on the Angular team. Uh, recently, I worked on redesigning our HTTP APIs with HTTP Client. I also work on our service worker implementation. And you may have seen me talk at conferences in the past about progressive web apps. It's one of the things I'm passionate about. But today, I want to do something a little bit different. Um, I interact with all of you guys at conferences and on Gitter sometimes. And people talk to me about design issues. And I, like I kind of like these little like, problems, you know, puzzles to solve with Angular. And I've noticed that a lot of the solutions make use of APIs, which are not that commonplace. Like Developers don't really use them quite often. Um, they're not necessarily complex or complicated APIs. They're just the lower level things in Angular that help us build like ng-if and ng-4 and our suite of material components. And so I wanted to talk about some of those. And since I only have 20 minutes, um, we're going to focus on two kind of related ones, the ng-template and template directives. And rather than do it in kind of an abstract way, um, I want to talk about a couple of the problems that, that can make use of, of these APIs for solutions. And so two of them that people have brought to me are designing a left navigation UI, where the current route can actually control some of the content in the left nav, and then designing an image carousel directive. And so we're going to do both of those and make use of templates and template directives. So left navigation is a pretty common UX pattern in applications, right? We have a giant header at the top. Um, there's navigation on the left that's mostly static. And our main content pane is actually our router outlet. As we navigate through the application, right, different routes get loaded in there. But this design has kind of a twist to it, because we want the route to be able to dictate some of the content that shows up in the left nav, right, outside of this router outlet. You can imagine like a, a flight search, right, where you search for, you know, put in your cities, and that happens in the main pane, and then those controls move over to the left nav and kind of exist there as long as you're on that route. And so when someone first brought this problem to me, my, my immediate response was like, well, we could do this within our HTML, right? We could have the route have some, some static HTML that it's going to send via service to the left nav, and we just render it within our HTML binding. And that works if you're willing to accept a couple different constraints, right? That HTML is static. We can't have data binding in there. And we also can't take advantage of any Angular components or directives. And so I think a better solution is to use templates for this and achieve the full power of Angular. So let's give it a shot. So a template, kind of more formally, is a chunk of Angular HTML that runs through NGC, our ahead-of-time compilation. And it gets turned, those, those um, the elements that you declare and the directives and the components and all the data binding gets turned into instructions to our view engine on how to render these things at runtime. And we use templates every day because they're part of at component, right? Every component has a template, and that template gets compiled and is used to display the component. And so that looks kind of like this, right? We have an H1, we have some other component, it has an ngif on it. Um, but there are, there's a second kind of template in Angular, and that is the ng template. And you can actually embed these in your component template and use them to do kind of more advanced things. So here's that same component again. We have an H1 that we're going to render at runtime, and we have an H2 inside an ng template. And when we actually render this component, that H2 is nowhere to be found, right? It's not part of the instruction to display this component. Angular is keeping it, keeping it for us on the side, and we can tell it when and where we want to render that content. And that doesn't even have to be in the same component that declares the template, right? One component can say, I have this H2 that's a template that I'm going to have on the side, and I'm going to send it to some other component and render it once or even more times, right? We're in complete control of where and when this content gets shown. So how do we do that? Well, in order to send, you know, send the template around from one component to another, we need a way to talk about it in code. And with Angular, that's called a template ref. A template ref is a reference, a handle to the template that we can send around in services. And we get one through a two-step process. First of all, we have to give the template a name, right? some way to refer to it. And we do that with a hashtag kind of symbol in our, tem in our template that means reference. So this template is named my template. And once we do that, we can use the view child annotation to go and tell Angular to query for it. And Angular will find that template for us and give us a reference to it in code. 
And if you've done view child before, you probably know we can't just access this field in the constructor. It won't be set yet. We have to actually wait until a view exists. And we do that by using the after view init lifecycle hook. So once that hook fires, that reference is OK, and we can then go and use it to transmit to left nav, and left nav can go ahead and render it. So this is what our design is going to look like. We're going to have our routes, and our routes will declare a template, send them somehow to the left nav via template ref, and the left nav will render it. So we have half the picture, half the picture here, right? We've talked about how to get the reference. Now we need to know how to render it. And rendering a template in Angular involves the creation of a view. A view is a rendered bit of HTML. And you'd create views dynamically in Angular with things called view containers. And what a view container is is a location in the DOM that lets you go ahead and instantiate templates or components inside of it. And it'll keep track of them, make sure change detection works, and when it's time to remove them, it knows how to do that. And you get a view container by indicating to Angular where in the DOM Right, where in your component DOM you would like to be able to insert things dynamically, and then querying for it with ViewChild. And you can do this on any element, but there's one in particular that's really useful for it, so I'm going to talk about that. That's, that is the ng container. How many people have used ng container in their applications? Right? Oh, very few. Wow. This, this is going to be awesome. Okay. So ng container is kind of like an invisible div. It exists to organize your code. Right? You can place other elements, other components inside the ng container. But at runtime, when it's rendered, their children, its children are rendered, all the foo in the bar here, but the container itself is non-existent in the runtime DOM. And we can actually place logic on this container. We can add ng if or ng for, we can repeat the section inside of it. And that lets us kind of organize our code without resorting to a bunch of nested divs like we used to do with CSS. But it's this property that ng container doesn't exist at runtime that makes it really nice for indicating, here's a location in the DOM where I would like to be able to insert things later. So in between these two h1s, I've declared an ng container with a name so I can go query for it. And then inside the component class itself, we can go ahead and do that. We can use ViewChild. And unlike with the template, we have to tell Angular we're actually interested in a view container. So please give us a view container ref. And it's this action of asking for it that tells Angular, here is where we want to be able to insert content at runtime. And again, we wait for ng after view init. And then we can call the create embedded view method, pass it our template ref, and Angular will go ahead and instantiate that template in the DOM. When it comes time to remove it, we can actually get the reference return from create embedded, review, create embedded view and destroy it. So for example, when we navigate away from one route, we probably want to remove that rendered template before the next route loads its. And so this is our design. Right? Routes will specify an ng template. We'll send that template ref via a service over to the left nav. And the left nav will use a view container to render it dynamically at runtime. This is great. It will work. There is one problem with it. And that's that it's actually pretty complex inside the route. Right? We have to use ViewChild to query for this template. We have to wait for the lifecycle event, communicate it to the service, and we have to repeat this code for every route that wants to do this. And if you're like me, that's not really that acceptable. You want to find a way to abstract this logic into a service or a component, or in this case, we're actually going to put it in a directive. So it turns out that if you combine templates and directives, you get this nice thing called a template directive. And you've used this before, because that's what ngif is. So if you look at ngif here on the left, this code we all write, right? div with an ngif on it. We're going to show or hide the div based on some condition. What Angular is actually seeing is the code on the right, desugared. So you're actually declaring a template. That's what the star means in ngif. And the template has the directive on it. And the directive gets to control what happens to this template. Does it get rendered or not? Does it get sent to some other part of the application? So we can do the same thing. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so the directive has to get access to the template somehow. But we don't have a way to query for it, right? You can't even use ViewChild on the directive. As it turns out, it's even easier than that. Because the directive is on the template element itself, 
Angular knows we can just inject it. Right? Angular will provide it for us. And so we can imagine we create a left nav directive that's used the same way. All it does is inject a template ref and send it to our left nav component. And then all we have to do in the route is actually annotate some content with left nav, and that content will automatically get um, rendered in the view, or sorry, rendered in the left nav instead of in the router outlet. Right? And that is much easier to use, especially for someone who doesn't understand how all this works. Right? If you have other developers on your team who weren't part of building this system and they just want to be able to use it, this is a really nice API. So that was the first problem. The second thing we're going to tackle is designing an image carousel. And in particular, we want to design a directive that implements the logic of a carousel while we leave the UI up to the user. Right? We only want to encode the mechanism of the carousel, let them figure out how they want to display images, how they want to react to next or previous events, et cetera. And so let's start off by sketching this. We're going to implement a directive called carousel. It's going to be a template directive. And the user is going to provide the template. And the template will be the actual UI of the carousel. So they decide how to render it, right? We're going to probably have an image tag and a button to navigate next or previous. Maybe they want to react to keyboard events somehow. It's entirely up to them. And we have a couple questions here we have to answer. How does the carousel get its input? How does it know what the list of images is that it wants to loop over? How does the template know what the current URL is? Right? Which image should I show? And when, the when something happens where we decide to advance the carousel, how do we tell it to do that? And to answer these questions, we can actually turn to another built-in Angular directive called ng4. Right? We use this one, too. And we use it so often that we probably don't even think about the fact it's kind of weird as far as directives go. Right? Most bindings in Angular happen to an expression which produces a single value. This one has some syntax in there. We have multiple identifiers. So it's kind of interesting. And this is actually a feature of template directives called uh, microsyntax. So let's dive in and see how this works. We have two different identifiers here, as I mentioned. And they're serving very different purposes. So on the right, we have values. This is a list of values that we're passing in that we want ng4 to iterate over. And that's actually an input of the directive. But the identifier on the left, called value, is completely different. It's actually a variable declaration, right? We're taking some value out of the directive that we can then bind to or display inside our template. So that's what the let keyword does there. The let keyword is saying this is a variable that's coming out of the directive, and we'll talk more about how that works. And on the right, we have this of keyword. And it turns out that of is not actually a keyword. It's this thing called a binding key. And what Angular is actually doing is combining the name of the directive, which is ng4, with the key, the binding key, of, and creating a synthetic binding to an input. So it's as if we just wrote ng4 of is bound to values. We can even take this to an extreme and imagine recreating an entire SQL query inside of a template directive. Right? Here we have the binding key select from, which will be bound to the table. We have a binding key where, which is bound to a condition function. Right? Order by and limit. All of these would become inputs. SQL query from, SQL where, SQL order by. You can get very expressive in the domain-specific language, or DSL, that you want to create inside your template directives. So we'll do that with the carousel. Right? Let's imagine our carousel has the syntax, let source from images. So images is the array that we want to iterate over, and source will be the URL coming out that we want to bind to. How do we implement something like this? Well, inside our directive, right, we need an input. The input is the name of the directive plus the binding key, so it'll be carousel from. And then when we create our embedded view of our template that they've given us, we pass out a context. And the context contains all these properties that we want to make available for binding in the template. But there's a problem here. We actually don't know what variable name the user's going to put. We said let source from images. They could have said let URL from images or let you know, href. So actually, when they say let source, there's some hidden, um, sh hidden syntactic sugar going on here. 
they're actually saying let source equals this property called dollar implicit. And so it's dollar implicit that we actually want to provide as part of the context. And you can provide other things as well. So for example, we could imagine the user invokes the carousel this way. Let source from images and let control equals this thing called controller. And controller is a property that we're going to pass out of the carousel into the template, and it'll have methods like next and previous and actually be able to interact with the carousel and tell it what to do. So here is our kind of final solution to this. We have a div with this star carousel. Remember, star means it's a template, so everything inside of it is passed as a template to the directive. Let source from images, so source is the current URL. It's a variable coming out because of the let. From images passes in an input binding to the carousel, giving it the list of images to iterate over. And we've also said we want another variable coming out, let control, and that's going to be equal to the context controller that we've passed out. And the controller lets us react to, for example, the button click, right? We can say control.next, and that will, in theory, advance the carousel to the next image. And so that looks like this when we actually implement it in code. Right? We have our carousel from input. We create our embedded view. We pass the dollar implicit to indicate what the current URL is. And we pass this controller object, which has a function on it that knows how to advance the carousel to the next image. And so that's how we build an image carousel as a template directive. So both of these, right, we built the left nav directive, which transports content to the left navigation. We've built an image carousel, which knows how to provide the behavior of the carousel while letting the user control what the UI is. Both of these are different designs and contribute to the architecture of the overall application, right? They let components collaborate with each other in order to solve problems. And that's one of the, the really nice things I like about ng templates and template directives. So um, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much. Um, it's kind of a 20-minute talk, so yeah. There are a lot of other uh, features and capabilities of these things. There's something in Angular called the ng template outlet, which you can use instead of a view container if you have um, kind of a, a more simplified use case. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm going to tweet out both the slides and an actual uh, example of both of these things with all the code together running and working, um, showing off how you would do it in, in a real application. So awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob.